Happy Saturday morning, morning, everybody. everybody. Happy Saturday to you. Welcome to the show. All right. I don't know why I just ate a bowl of cereal, the part where I'm supposed to introduce it. I ate a big bite. (laughs) Real professional. Very professional. My name is Nick uh, from VCR Party and the Found Footage Festival. Joe's over there. We got George. And today we have Mike Drucker, the Uh co-head writer on Full Frontal with Samantha B. And And friend of the show. Friend friend of the the show. show. He's been on Quarantine Classics before. Yes. And we're happy to have you back, too, because I know you are a video game fan, a former video game journalist, right? Writer. I actually wrote Writer. video games. I wrote video games. That's right. Wait. And did localization and all that, too, yeah. right? Yeah. But, and, like, you, you wrote the stories in the video games? I would help the translators, like, make things like jokes make sense, accents. Like, you know, if someone has, like, a rough and tumble accent in the Japanese version, you sort of find an equivalent in the English. Man, and what, it's fun. Why, why are you not working that job still? How, uh, how did you leave that job? TV pays more. Oh, yeah. TV pays a lot more money. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. And you can yeah. afford more video games that way. Well, we're watching yeah. the Pac-Man Halloween episode uh, today, the Pac-Man Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Uh, this is a cartoon I grew up watching. Did you guys watch this at all? I vaguely remember it. I sort of, it's sort of like, um, you know, those, like, it's, it's sort of like Mask a bit, where it's like a cartoon I vaguely recollect, but not very well. Yeah, I, I feel like most if it was on TV, I was watching it. It was just like it was in front of you. This is before on demand and DVR. It was like there's something on the TV right now in front of me. Yeah, right. Me, yeah, my brothers, we'll, we'll watch it. It doesn't matter what it is. We sure. had no discerning taste. Yeah, so, me yes, I probably watched it. George, did you remember anything? I barely remember it between toy commercials. I yes. think it was something that just separated serial commercials from each other. <laughs> yeah, that's what most TV was, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, but before we get into that, Joe, you had some uh, Halloween related, Halloween's next weekend. You had some Halloween photos you wanted to share. Is that right? Well, yeah, I, I grabbed two from, uh, you know, like I said, Mike, Mike has been on uh, Quarantine classes, class, Classics because he had the best plunkets. You were like the king of the plunkets. Uh, yeah. Bad photographs. Uh, and I, and I uh, screen grabbed a couple from your instagram oh great that, that i think we played last time but they're, they're <laughs> halloween related because you're dressed there are costumes involved so oh yeah one, that's me that's me yeah. as a man <laughs> <laughs> that's me as a man <laughs> and i remember saying like well how old are you 13 in that and you're like no i was like 30 something 35 <laughs> you're, like, you're like this is three weeks ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i like your, your caption grown-ass mutant depression <laughs> <laughs> yeah and also your facial expression too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like had to it. set that up on a tripod and then run in front of it <laughs> because I live alone. The saddest Halloween. Yeah, it was very sad. It wasn't like someone was taking that for me and then we went out. Right. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was not the case. What? But what what's the facial expression? Is like you're about to do a karate move? I don't know what that is. It was probably like me trying to be silly or something or cute. Okay. Right. It was two years ago, so who knows anymore? Right. Okay. Yeah, it's been so yeah. long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this one of you of, of your dad and bart simpson yeah and he said my dad is happier in this photo than of any with his children <laughs> that off-brand bart simpson is the best <laughs> the neck flap untucked I, I think the neck flap was supposed to go inside the shirt right yeah. i think the guy probably should have done and that and that's homer's color of shirt bart is red I yeah mean, uh, <laughs> but just your dad that face care. Yeah. <laughs> did your dad frame this picture? You know, did like did no, you, like, have it on his desk and like okay. Uh, uh, I wish. Uh, well, happy early Halloween, Mike and, oh, and everybody. What's uh, everybody eating for cereal? I've got. Uh, I brought this one. I think Sally, one of our viewers, suggested churros made by Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oh wow! And uh, I gotta say, better than Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Tastes almost exactly the same, but they don't get as soggy in milk because they're. Um, Churro what, shape. What's the percentage of sugar for your daily value? How much? Um, are... Let me look at sugar. What, while you're looking at that, I'm I'm having pop tarts today. I switched it up. I was we were not a, nice. a, a pop tart family at all, 
But then I was like, you know what? I'm going to get pop tarts, and these are the ones that I got. Simply, they're oh, like they're healthy. <laughs> the healthy. No, no corn syrup. No corn syrup, but fifty six percent of your total sugars for the day. So you got forty four percent left to go. So this is twenty. <laughs> this is twenty two percent. But I feel like a serving is like two of these things. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mike, what do you have? I have uh, honey nut Cheerios, which is not exciting. I know. No, but I okay. have it in a Ninja Turtles bowl that I actually had as a child <laughs> and still have. Uh, so bowl. that is what I got. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And you you still... won the bre- breakfast competition this morning. You yeah. still eat out of that? I like... still eat out of it. Copyright okay. 1990. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Wait. And George. George. Well, well last. Le- no, no. Last week I had. You remember I did it. I did five cereals together, which you just called a suicide. This week I'm only doing two together. So this is sort of like a cry for help. This is, a, uh, this is uh, corn pops frosted and frosted flakes, flakes. And, and 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 the you know the corn pops take the form of the container, so it's sort of like a cube. Oh, of right, corn it, pops. they kind of they kind of stick together, right? So they yeah. look like the container that they were in, just like in your colon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great. Nice. Well, let's, we're all doing great. Yeah, we're all doing great. Uh, we'll, we'll be coming down episode. about halfway through the episode, so mm-hmm. well, let's talk a little bit about. Um, Pac-Man, uh, and I thought it'd be fun to start about the phenomenon of, of Pac-Man um, with a commercial for cereal, Pac-Man cereal. Let's take a look. Ghost, ghost, solar Pac-Man cereal. Then let's go ghost chomping. Ghost chompers. No tire. Who's going to help us now? Ooh, me, Super Pac-Man. Now this crispy corn cereal has added new Super Pac-Man marshmallows like me, the biggest ghost chomper of all. Ooh, Chompers. I'm a ghost chomper too. It's Pac-Man. A chomping good part of a nutritious breakfast with me and me. Super Pac-Man. <laughs> nutritious it, breakfast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you recognize the voice of uh, of soup of uh, what's his name? Super Pac? No. Who was it? It's the guy who did um, Jerry Mahoney, the ventriloquist. That we have that video about ventriloquism with fun and profit. Paul oh. Winchell. Oh my God! Yes. Yeah. Oh, so he's, I, he's like a legendary uh, ventriloquist guy too, right? And, oh, and voiceover, voiceover guy. He he did a lot of cartoon voices. So yeah, that was him as Super Pac. Weirdly, wow. in the Pac Man cartoon, when Super Pac showed up in season two, it was voiced by Lorenzo Music, the best name of anybody, who wasn't a pro voiceover guy, but they heard him speaking and they just cast him as Garfield. So that laconic, lazy. Garfield voice was Super Pac-Man in the in the Pac-Man cartoon. Wow. Yeah. And here's a little bit more about how big Pac-Man was because I think it came out in 81 at the video game and it just it was Pac-Man fever as yeah. the Bruckner and Garcia song said. But here's a I found this local news report from Chicago about Pac-Mania. Anyone who's ever put a quarter into a video game certainly knows this sound. It belongs to a game called Pac-Man. But Pac-Man is more than just another video game. It's rapidly becoming an international craze known appropriately as Pac-Mania. And all over the country, in bars, bowling alleys, arcades, even yogurt stores, millions of people are falling in love with them. Even yogurt stores. (laughs) Yogurt stores. (laughs) By the way, I I forgot that I have this, but I just want to, like, emphasize that I have, (laughs) like, a Pac-Man arcade cabinet. On my Whoa, desk. we got to see that. Okay, we'll play this and then we'll take a closer look. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Guys, go by and jump on everything. <laughs> oh, Pac Man is so cute. <laughs> it is, it's so cute. Space Invader seems boring, you know, you just shoot at the dudes, but in Pac Man, it's more exciting. What makes Pac Man cute? Because it's a little metal. <laughs> <laughs> Some even get the notorious Pac Man finger blisters from Be too careful, much shifting. Mike. But all Pac-Maniacs can't wait to try their luck through the mazes and beat their highest scores. 52,000. Sign her up. What about you? Uh, I have no idea. 23,000. 138,000 or something. 190,000. But right now in the country, there's one game that's sweeping everything, and that's Pac-Man. You got Pac-Man, man? Yeah. Yes, Pac-Mania is everywhere, with no sign of let-up. It's even reached the nightclubs. Listen to comic Al Katz's latest routine at the Comedy Cottage in Rosemont. You play about six, seven hours, and you just and you, and you get in your car and drive home. <laughs> You're driving down the road, and you try to eat up all the white lines. <laughs> 
Thank How far will Black Mania go? Well, you can see there already are toys and T-shirts and mugs. But by next year, they're also supposed to be Pac-Man pajamas, sportswear, frisbees and watches, and anything else that might tie in to Pac-Man. Don't go away. We'll be back in a minute. Chef Tell's up next. Chef Tell is up next. <laughs> and, of course, even more than that, then the cartoon came out in uh, 1982. It aired for two years and uh, 44 episodes. Can I, can I point out, he didn't have that stuff that was on the, there was nothing Pac-Man on. The, it was like a, just a space alien it was stuffed like, animal. Yeah. It wasn't a Pac-Man. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of a knockoff. I think stuff. they were like close enough. It's, yeah. Nobody's <laughs> yeah. going to question it. But that tie is pretty nice. Like that tie for that era is like a relatively nice, subtle Pac-Man tie. It, I would like that bad. now. Yeah, 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 it was not bad. So uh, this was another Hanna-Barbera cartoon. And uh, I don't think we've watched a Hanna-Barbera yet, but uh, they were sort of the granddaddy of Saturday morning cartoons. And uh, the show was a hit. And you can see here, they paired it with the new Little Rascals, uh, the Little Rascals cartoon and the Richie Rich show. And uh, it um, was about, it was kind of a weird premise because the main thing was that Pac-Man was a kind of a blue collar dude. He wasn't like a magical guy or anything. He just kind of wore a, you know, like a fifties house husband kind of guy who wore like a, a little, uh, I don't know, fifties hat and um, kind of had a gravelly voice. And uh, he had a wife, Mrs. Pac-Man, Pepper. Yes. And uh, I guess she took his last name. And uh, Baby Pac, their baby, uh, Chomp Chomp the dog and Sour Puss the cat, both voiced by Frank Welker, who does every animal voice. Yeah. And uh, all the ghosts were named and had personality. So, you know, there's Inky, Blinky, which I think they're named in the video game, right, Mike? Yes, yeah, they are. And they do, I guess they have personalities in the game too, because one's kind of shy and like, will go after you, but then retreat. Yeah. And um, so they did have personalities in the cartoon. And the whole premise is there's some big bad guy named Mesmeron, <laughs> who is trying to get all the power pellets for Pac City or Pac Land. And, uh, and the ghosts are always trying to eat Pac-Man and chomp him. But once Pac-Man eats a power pellet, then he chomps the ghosts. They turn into eyeballs. They return back to Mesmeron's lair and put on their ghost new ghost sheets to do, go do you, on. Do you know if this is, is this canon for Pac-Man? Does Pac-Man even have a canon? I don't know. I Is don't it? believe it does, although I don't know for sure. I do like the tone, the, was it Ghost Muncher, Ghost Chomper? Yes. Yeah. It well, sounds well, like a weird slur that you'd say against pack people. <laughs> yeah. Like if they moved into your, you know, like a bunch of Ghost Chompers moved in. <laughs> don't get me wrong, it's fine. I just don't want fine. to marry my daughter. You I know? don't want a Ghost <laughs> Chomper. Yeah, I don't want it in my backyard. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and apparently power pellets in this cartoon were the primary power source of the city as well, in addition to being food for them. And uh, so that's the basic premise. The episode we're going to watch. Oh, and you know, the other thing, when I was rewatching this, I realized that the voice of Pac-Man was a guy who, I, I don't know, I had a voice, how in my head I remembered his voice was just kind of like, almost like a superhero voice or I'm Pac-Man. But no, it was this old Jewish comedian named Marty Ingalls. Brooklyn-born <laughs> Jewish comedian whose uncle was actually the mayor of New York in the 40s. And he was a guest star on, uh, he did like rubber face stuff. He was a guest star on the Dick Van Dyke show. I think I have a picture of what the guy looks like here. Um, he, uh, but yeah, he got cast as Pac-Man. There's Pac-Man and there's, oh, oh, pretty good, looks, right? Kind of looks like him, actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't hate that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the, he's got a distinctive voice. And this episode we're going to watch aired on October 23rd. So yesterday, 1982. And uh, it's a Halloween. And then it later aired as a Halloween special the next week in prime time on yeah. October 30th. And uh, it was the episode we're going to watch is called Trick or Chomp. It was paired with a Dracula <laughs> episode that was even more forgettable than this one. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's just, it's, unless anybody has any more questions about Pac-Man... Well, uh, just one quick question. Yeah. His wife is Mrs. Pac-Man? She's yes. not Ms. I guess she wouldn't be Ms. Pac-Man. I guess the video game Ms. Pac-Man took place before she got married. Yes, yeah. they meet. Yeah. And then, okay. yeah. It's like in Pac-Man, Pac-Man's like the Smith of last names. So you're going to like meet a lot of other ones. <laughs> There's a lot of pac It's very incestuous, actually. It's kind of weird. Uh, all right. And one of the greatest theme songs in cartoon history. Oh, 
Pac-Man. That's me. <laughs> Pac-Man. Dada! Oh, I must have those power pellets. Go find me the power pellet forest. Like a honeymooners kind of a thing. A little bit, yeah. Okay. More family oriented. Go, 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 go. Come on out of there. <laughs> oh, where we go, Twinkle Tweet Dada? Twinkle Tweet. Twi just as soon as your dad dad's through with the dishes. <laughs> See if you recognize Baby Pack's voice. Like, look at his legs. Look at there was always a weird disconnect because the cartoon version on the side of the cabinet of Pac-Man had legs and like was 3D and then it was pretty far removed from like the pie wedge Pac-Man. So there's a it, that always it was hard tough to reconcile those two as a kid for me. <laughs> I, I bet there were I bet there were some meetings about this too. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. Ooga, ooga. Well, <laughs> I guess you're through with the dishes, huh? Be right with you, Peppa. Just gotta get my costume on. Your dad is still a little right kid at heart, Pac Baby, and he's gonna go trick or treating with you. It's pretty sexy. Yeah, it's, like what is? It? Yeah. Hubba hubba. Oh, twick or tweet with Dada. Baby Pack is voiced by Rusi Taylor, who plays Martin Prince on The Simpsons. Oh. That's who she is. Really. Hi-yo, Power Pellets! The Pack Ranger rides again! Hey, cut that out, Chomp Chomp! I said Pack Ranger, not Pack Stranger! This is Pack Baby's first Halloween. I, didn't get that I just joke. know he's gonna yeah. love it! Yeah, Pack Baby should feel right at home. Very Flintstones. Yeah. <laughs> The it's just, scoring is really weird. I, it's very strange. They're trying to make it video gamey, I think. Yeah. Now come on, there's nothing to be afraid of, Pat Baby. All you gotta do is Pat say baby. trick or treat. <laughs> See, look, I'll show you. Trick or treat. <laughs> Classic Hanna Barbera shock. Why, slightly little pack, baby. Oh, Morse has got plenty of tweets. <laughs> oh, can you? Oh, trick or bark, huh? Uh, trick or treat. I, I can, I can just imagine. I can just picture me and my two brothers. Sitting here and watching this joylessly, like sitting oh, yeah. on the couch. Not a single laugh. <laughs> like that exact expression on Pac-Man's face on yours. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my two other brothers, all three of us just sitting there just like shoveling sugary cereal. <laughs> George has been doing that this whole episode so far. So yeah, you, you got it down. <laughs> Only one? You know, you're right. You are a bit old to be trick-or-treating. I do like that as a transition. That's, That's a great bad. transition. Oh, yeah, well, old or not, I'm gonna get me some treats. Oh my god. <laughs> trick or treat! He's relentless. Did he abandon his family? Oh, trick or treat. I think so. He really wants those pellets. I ain't got no treats, but I got a real neat trick. It's called Pack in the Sack. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, You're catching on fast for a first timer. Booga, you betcha. There's a trick. Put a pinch of sage in your boot. <laughs> and all day long, a fresh scent will be your reward. Joe, you have an orange cat. You've got two of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. He speaks to me. Mm -hmm. Looks like Marty. Jeez. Yeah, he tries to kill Chomp Chomp. 
There's a lot of cheerful hostility in this cartoon. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> What? <laughs> Just loading, loading pumpkins onto the, uh, loading the old jack-o'-lantern helicopter or, or airplane. I, I want to see that part in the screen. Yep. Yeah. Oh, he's got hair, too. Yeah. He's male pattern baldness. Yeah. That's nah, not my position to judge. If it's on the <laughs> conveyor belt, got to put it on. And I do it with a smile. <laughs> It's almost like Spy versus Spy kind of. Yeah. Or he, Roadrunner Coyote here. And, but you know what? Like this, this adds to my theory of orange cats being showbiz cats. I mean, the fact that like, because there's Garfield, there's Heathcliff, and now there's the Pac-Man cat, and there's yeah. Morris the cat. But now, now I got that to add to my theory is that Pac-Man cat yeah. is orange. To all those, to all those haters trying to disprove you that orange cats aren't showbiz cats. Yeah. Now you got some ammunition. Exactly. Take that. <laughs> You're familiar with Sourpuss from Pac-Man the Cartoon? Yeah. Oh, is that his name, Sourpuss? Yeah. Gotta file that one away. Mm -hmm. Instead of learning a second language, you'll file... <laughs> I like the transition. It works. Yeah, yeah. the chomp? Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, this is our night. Yeah, how we... Wait a minute, pause what... real quick. Did we just see his toes? <laughs> <laughs> just go back a little I bit. To... No, no, so. go, back, go back a little I bit to the male so. Pac-Man. Yeah. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, are you able to zoom in or no? Oh, God. No, I uh, can't, but... Oh, uh, yes, he has that's toes. clearly and toes. And, like, oh. toenails. Like, it's not like a cartoon foot that's just digits. It's toenails and an ankle. <laughs> decided to go as a pack clown we're gonna have to add that to the wikipedia page that pac-man does have toes that's canon too <laughs> yeah so glad we had you on mike this is kind of insight well guys this is our night yeah halloween what better occasion for a ghost monster to celebrate hi ho hi ho it's, it's off to jump we go, go. <laughs> trick or chomp they, oh, there's like when they say the title of the movie and the, you know, <laughs> trick or chomp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this also makes me think of uh, the uh, McRib commercial where they're like, sassy sauce, chomp. Just the <laughs> word chomp. <laughs> yeah. I've, yeah. I've only heard it there in the McRib commercial. I'm going to try and cue up that McRib commercial. Yeah, please do. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cute? You kids look just like the ghost monsters. Run, Pat Dunce. We are the ghost monsters. You always see the chomp off Say, screen. Say, this think. is fun. And it's going to be even more fun. Look. <laughs> it's Pac-Man. Wait, I thought he was a clown. I think that was a different Pac-Man. Oh, it was a different Pac family. You're right. Yeah, okay. yeah. I was confused. And now's our chance to scare the they Pac's the hands off at him. Quick, into the tree. I got a feeling this ain't such a good idea. Shut up and get moving. Hey, you know, I get the feeling we're being watched. <laughs> nah, I must be dreaming. Yeah, we'll get him next time. Hey, fellas, you smell something funny. Uh-oh! Pack skunk! Yeah! Pack skunk! <laughs> this time we'll scare him for sure. Just leave everything to me. What level of the game is this? <laughs> Is this after the pretzel that you get to this stage? Yeah, this is like after you get a few of the fruit and start to lose Very your shit. Very involved, yeah. They're all fermented. <laughs> no, no, not that! Sure, this is gonna work. If this don't scare those pack fools, nothing will. All right, Inky, let's have those bandages. I do like the voice talent in this. Pretty good. I feel like a lot of voice talent 
is is uh, Brooklyn accents. You know, like yeah, I feel like, yeah. I feel like uh, we grew up watching all these cartoons, and like there were a lot of Brooklyn accents in these. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what that stems from, like the Honeymooners, maybe, or or, or like a uh, Catskills comedy, or yeah. vaudeville, maybe. Yeah. And now we're all in Brooklyn. I know, <laughs> yeah. weird. The ghost mummy. Come on, let's scare him. Woo! Pac-Man. <laughs> Did you say something to me? <laughs> Woo! Me, Inky. What are you talking about? Woo! You. What? Shut up, let's go. Yeah! All right, let's take a quick break. How's everybody holding up? Good. Yeah, doing all right. Punky, Punky yeah. Brewster. Good, I think so. Yeah, George, you hated it. the Punky Brewster cartoon we watched. That's like I, your. I just like Sour Puss. I think I like Sour Puss's laugh. No, you know what? This, there's a lot of action in this. It's just like nonstop. Something's always happening. There's well, not yeah. a lot of chit chat. It's just like straight up action. So well, I'm comedy vignettes. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was surprised. We're talking about Brooklyn accents, and it always surprises me who like some of the voices were behind like cartoons fa- famous saturday morning cartoons like i would never have known that like a an old 40s uh jewish comedian was the voice of pac-man but uh, i brought i uh, brought some other ones for some fun facts we can uh show you some other famous cartoon voices so bobby from bobby's world most people think this is um howie mandel that voiced uh, Bobby from Bobby's World. I found out, I did some research. It's actually Sam Elliott. Did uh, from... Real? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we yeah. would have all believed you. <laughs> yeah, Sam Elliott <laughs> voiced Bobby from Bobby's World. Uh, this one uh, this one surprised me too. Rainbow Bright um, was voiced by elderly Lucille Ball. That was one that I had is no idea. Is this a real one or is this a joking one? Look it up. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we've got uh, George, the Super Friends. Every single one of the Super Friends was voiced by the same person. And it was Tom Waits. Oh. And, <laughs> you can hear it. Yeah, you, you can hear Aquaman. it once you, yeah, in Aquaman especially. So, yeah, those are just some of the famous people who voiced uh, the beloved cartoons from our childhood. Wow. George, do you have any uh, commercials for us this, uh, this week? Yes, I, I, I remember Pac-Man being huge, but I didn't realize how many different products became, uh, were... Pacified? Yeah, the Pac-Mania and Pac-Depression, like, covered, the full spectrum of products were covered. Saturday Morning Cartoons will be right back. Who's eating his way through Arby's? Pac-Man! Arby's new Pac-Man glass is so popular, everything at Arby's is being gobbled up. There goes a roast beef deluxe. There goes a sub. Whoops, there goes our logo. Come to Arby's today for your fabulous Pac-Man glass. But you better hurry, that Pac-Man is insatiable. There's no stopping him. Get your official Pac-Man glass today, only at Arby's. You've never done for twelve. Twelve dollars on eBay now, probably. That yeah. black man is insatiable. He really is. He <laughs> likes Arby's roast beef. <laughs> I would have bought that for fifty nine cents. I feel like my family had that. We, yeah. we bought all that shit. We got all. You've this. never seen a Six Flags like this before. You never had a fast to fall like this before. You never had a place to play like this before. The every kid's never had a way to ride than this before. The wettest on the river's ever been. You've never Brave the 10 story free falls. Play in the new Pac Man Play Fort. There's a wet in Thunder River, new shows, and more. So come on out to six. I want to go to the Pac Man Play Fort. Hey, Joey, what's she really like? She's the most exciting woman I ever met. Yeah. Atari introduces the woman of the year, Ms. Pac Man. Just like the arcade. It's Don Pardo, right? It sounds like Don Pardo. That's got to be Don Pardo. Yes. Classic. Four different game screens, floating fruit, even pretzels. Honey, don't you know? I'm more than Pac-Man with a bow. Reach for Ms. Pac-Man. Reach, reach, reach for Atari. That commercial is a journey. It really is. It's a full-ass journey, that commercial. 
Was, wow. And that was supposed to be Mae West, I assume, right? Like, that was a Mae West yeah. kind of a... Uh, yeah. Hey, big boy. Sort of with an Ethel Merman delivery, but yeah, it was yeah. Uh, <laughs> pretty odd. Now, here you get to see the Pac-Man cartoons used in a, a commercial. And this surprised me what it was for. I had no memory of this. Oh, Pac-Man, I'm beat! And I'm hungry! Thank goodness for Pac-Man pasta from Chef Boyardee. Pac-Man pasta? Mmm, little spaghetti shaped like us. Delicious. And because Chef Boyardee is packed with goodness, it's great for when we have to eat and run. Pac-Man pasta from Chef Boyardee. With meatballs, mm. without meatballs, mm. or chicken flavor. Mm. Thank goodness for Pac-Man pasta. Thank goodness for, for Chef Boyardee. Boyardee. How did they I do can... that back then? Did they have a computer where they would type in the noodle shape and then they would print out the noodle shape in something? It must be a mold that would yeah. print it, you know, like a metal press yeah. that would print it, you know, off the, yeah. It's pretty impressive for it back was. then. Yeah, I think that was it for commercials. But yeah, I, I, you can just taste exactly that that artificial tang of the tomato sauce in those. Yeah. Like, I know exactly what that would sound. I've eaten I a lot it. of Chef Boyardee. Like, yeah, yep. still eat it. Um, you know, my, my family got uh, Pac-Man fever. Like, we, we got the Atari, I think, in the early 80s. And I remember my mom, who's not a gamer at all, she got hooked on Pac-Man. And I remember, like, walking into the living room, and she would be playing it by herself. And then she'd be kind of embarrassed that I would walk in the room, just like she got caught. And she's like, oh, hey, I was just, I was just uh, playing around with this. <laughs> like she was smoking and didn't want the family to know. <laughs> exactly no, no, it's not me. Right. <laughs> But on Atari, on 2600? On Atari, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She totally, uh, yeah, she totally got hooked. Let, let's see that arcade cabinet. So uh, that's like yeah. a mini version of the... It is a one-fourth size one that actually uh, does turn on. size. So how do you... Oh, whoa. Yeah. There's, yeah, there, and there's the Pac-Man that's different than the one you see where it's got the legs and, yeah. Yeah. It runs, Eventually like it does turn on. One-quarter size quarters. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah it'd, be get... like, it'd be like a dime. Probably. I don't know if you can hear it. I have the volume pretty low, but... Uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah. can't, can't so... really hear it, but that is really cool. So you're a Pac-Man player, too? I do like Pac-Man. Um, I actually I disagreed with that young man in the uh, news report that said Space Invaders is worse than Pac-Man. I think Space Invaders is a better game than Pac-Man. But you know what? He was, he was caught up in the Pac-Man fever at the time. I get it. <laughs> like, you know. It, it turns people into something. My, mom. <laughs> yeah. my uh, cousin and I had the, uh, we both had the uh, Bruckner and Garcia Pac-Man Fever album, but I always liked uh, Do the Donkey Kong uh, song off that. They had a Frogger song. They had Do the Donkey Kong, I thought was objectively the better song, but Pac-Man Fever was the single. That's what took off, was on the radio, and um, we would do dances to it. George, were you a Pac-Man player? I was. We got uh, Pac-Man for Atari the day it came out. Whoa. And uh, I got a Pac-Man T-shirt that I wore until it was completely granulated and unrecognizable. I loved it. I loved where it. did you get the Where did you get Pac-Man the day it came out? Did you have to wait in the line? Is that how it used to I, work back then? I believe there was. A, I think we got our Atari that day too. We were pretty oh, late to Atari. What a wow. day! Buy both of them. And there's actually when I was looking for commercials, I found the J.C. Penny commercial that was for that um, special that they had that promotion. Whoa. Really? George, okay. Did, did any of you guys memorize the patterns? Because there's that book that came out about how to solve it and yeah. get the patterns down. I never got that far into it. It, it was never that important to me. <laughs> no. Yeah. But what about now? Pac Man's still going. You still see like the giant one with four like stand up things in arcades. Yeah. yeah. And then there's also like that. There was one released for like on the PlayStation Store, I think, that is like a download DLC type of game. Yeah. That was pretty good, I remember. I forgot what it was, but. Yeah. I, w I was always a Ms. Pac-Man kind of guy. Like I like Ms. Pac-Man, the fast Ms. Pac-Man. That one, I, I remember a New Year's Eve. It was probably like 1997. I spent the entire, it was at a friend's parents' house. The parents were gone. They had a, In the basement, they had a Ms. Pac-Man upright. And I spent the entire night until like four in the morning playing it. And I, and I got really good at it. And I have fond memories of that New Year's Eve. I yeah. was all by myself playing it and like occasionally people would come over and watch uh and then it's like away. mike's ninja turtles halloween party just kind of a <laughs> yeah party for one if you have a tripod you can have a party by yourself 
<laughs> but yeah, I was always Ms. Pac-Man all the way. Yeah, so. I, I think that is objectively the better game because it was just faster and more stressful and all the things you like about Pac-Man. Sort it just of moves. Out. Yeah, it yeah. just moves. It's yeah. a lot better. Well, let's uh, watch what happens now. This is getting into the haunted house portion of the episode. and uh, Yeah, I'm getting nervous here. I hope know. they don't die. Yeah, the, Pac- the Pac-Man family. Let's take a look. Once we trap Pac-Man and his family inside this haunted house, it'll be Panic City. I don't like the sound of that place. Button it, Blinky. Come on, Packy. After we trick-or-treat this house, we can go home. Yikes! Uh, what do you say we uh, skip this place, huh? Oh, Dada? Uh, hmm? Chicken? Oh, uh, I got you. Pac-Man? Chicken? <laughs> Follow me! Uh, I'll just, uh, uh, knock. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, there's nobody home. Let's get out of here. Mike, have you ever written for a cartoon? Uh, no, I would love to write for a cartoon. I would very much love to write for a cartoon, but I have not yet. I bet animation would be, uh, would be fun. It would be. It would be super fun. I would absolutely love to. Um, yeah, I have, I have no jokes on that. I would. If no, you, yeah, I uh, know. I just a cartoon I was, and you wasn't asking this. in a comedic oh. way. No, I, but yeah. I, I was going to say, Al, Albert, my wife, Albertina, she, she's written on a cartoon. She wore, wore, uh, it's coming out pretty soon. Uh, but she said that you have to have every detail. Like you have to know what kind of windows are in the back are they bay windows in the back like it's every right. like every like, well you have to describe detail. that in the script yes exactly oh. so that the animators know exactly what to draw so you have to draw the ba- you have to write the background you have to write everything oh so this would say like pack suit of armor uh yeah wow yeah, with red red drapes hanging on a bone, bone yeah thing. <laughs> but this is kind of like you know like a writing exercise like okay pac-man's in a haunted house what are the gags and you, yeah. the sky's the limit so it that would, would be, be fun, fun. That yeah would be yeah so fun yeah. <laughs> pac-man's gonna be turning purple with fear this time oh uh, it uh, must have been a loose key or something <laughs> Another way out of here somewhere. Wait, uh, did you hear something? Chomp, chomp, did did you blow out the candle? I think Chomp Chomp always has fleas. Maybe this door leads somewhere, huh? Uh, wasn't Chomp Chomp here just a minute ago? <laughs> nope. They're not under there. Hey, where did Sourpuss run off to? I don't it's know. A little overscored oh, here. We better find them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, Punky Brewster had the same thing <gasps> with the trap door leading right to the slide. Or not, not Punky Brewster, Rubik the Amazing Cube. I'm getting them all mixed up. But they all have that. The trap yeah. door that leads to a slide. Tra- that's a trap, yeah. That's what happened. Yeah, and now we're going to do some real trick or chomping. Run for your lives! We're going to chomp, chomp, chomp. On your bones, bones, bones. We're going to laugh. <laughs> that's dark. <laughs> that's real dark. Groans, groans, groans. Oh, oh, dead end. I think we're done for, Packy. Dada, Dada, twinkle, tweet. Uh, what? Twinkle, tweet, Dada. Twinkle, t- of course. We can eat the treats. And give those ghost monsters a trick. <laughs> Have no fear. Pac-Man's here. Pac-Man's here. You guys do the thing where you wait by the pellet and then the ghosts get close. Yeah, all the time. All so the that's, that's the cartoon equivalent of what's happening now. It's times like this 
when a skeleton <laughs> key really So that's what the inside of a when they die. <laughs> that's what they look like. When they die and they decompose. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. This, yeah. this is real dark. Oh and I, the, the oh. key has a pack man on it. And also he has a, he also has toes too. So yep. they're, they're, oh, there you go. That, that, that is canon. <laughs> it comes in handy. You'll never catch me, honey. Oh, oh, oh me, oh my, I gotta hide. Kind of the curly of the character. <laughs> Why would he be scared of a ghost? <laughs> he is one. This looks like a good place to hide. <laughs> The, the Lucy and Harpo Marx routine. Oh, I get it. You're just my reflection, aren't you, right? You got it, Pac-Man. Happy Halloween! <laughs> da, da. Twinkle chunk! Twinkle chunk! The ending. Yep. Love the theme song. Electronic music. Look at the credits. Here's the Namco. Oh, I love that. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, that beautiful. Love that uh, ending. That sound too. Yeah. Oh. The best, yeah. Uh, uh, so so Nick, Pac Man I, survived and ended I, up surviving. I did look up uh, the, the McRib Chomp. Yeah. And I found it. Come and get it. The barbecue's on at McDonald's. It's McRib time. There's grilled pork swimming in that sassy sauce. A little pickle, a little onion. Lick your fingers, smack your lips. You're biting McRib. Chomp. It's like a barbecue in a barn without the bones. Only a buck sixty-nine, and only here for a limited time. The good time, great taste of McDonald's McRib Chomp. 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 That was worth it. Sass yeah. sauce. <laughs> Trick or Chomp. Uh, yeah. All right. Good. I'm glad we got the McRib Chomp in there. Chomp. Uh, George, what did we learn today? Oh, there's definitely a lesson in this episode for us. In the maze of life, as we strive to achieve our daily goals, we're beset by ghosts of doubt. And as our resolve flags, we often look for help. Sometimes that help may seem to come in the form of a pill. But understand there are no shortcuts in life. And pills are bad. Unless they give you the supercharged energy to turn around and destroy everything that pursues you. So if we've learned anything from Pac-Man, it's that drugs can sometimes be awesome. And that's why the more you battle is twice the knowing. Yeah. The more you wow. battle is twice the knowing. George's lesson for today. Powerful words. Powerful George. words. I'm, you know what? I'm going to take an Adderall right now because uh, you inspired me. I'm going to do uh, it. Powerful words, powerful pellets. Um, <laughs> uh, and Mike, uh, full frontal with Samantha B. How's it going with the... Uh, are you back in studio? What's going on? We're uh, not quite back in studio yet. We might be back in a studio, but we're not sure when that is. Um, yeah. But it's good. 10.30 Wednesdays on TBS. We'll have a show after the day after the election that I will have to write at four in the morning. I'm so sorry for everything. <laughs> I mean, we, we got you at the busiest time of your probably career. Right yeah, now, yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll take some time to to watch a McRib commercial with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's my priority. Yeah. yeah, I'll watch a Halloween themed episode of Pac Man. Why not? Yeah. I got nothing better to do. It's a break. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got well, some leftover Beto O'Rourke jokes if you need them. <laughs> yeah, fax them over to Mike. Oh, and it's your Twitter. Beta. Your Twitter is always great too, uh, and and your Instagram. So, Thank you. what are those? What what are how can people find you there? Mike, Mike Drucker is dead is your Instagram, which everybody right. should be following yes. you by now. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, just Mike Drucker on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great. Thank you for joining us. Happy Saturday morning, everybody. And uh, from Chomp Chomp and everybody here in uh, VCR Party Land, have a great Saturday. That's all. That's it. Bye. Bye.